So hi, um, today we'll be looking at SERDs, okay? So uh, a SERD is basically an irrational form of a number. For example, the square root of 4 is 2. It, it, it is a whole number. It has a complete answer. There are no decimal places. However, the square root of 5, the, the answer is 2 point something. This does not produce an answer with the whole number. And therefore, this is considered a third. And so does the square root of 6 and the square root of 7. The square root of 9, it has a whole number as an answer, which is 3. So this is not considered uh, a third because the answer is rational, um, whereas the answers for thirds are irrational. Okay. So let's have a look at some important notes that we have to remember when it comes to working with thirds. So a third, um, third with the value inside being a, multiplied with a third value inside being b, is equal to the square root of a b. It basically means that the square root of two multiplied by the square root of three is equal to the square root of six. The, the values inside are just multiplied. Next. The square root of a multiplied by the square root of a, the same value inside, is actually equal to the square root of a square. And a square to the power of 1, I'm just explaining how this works, a square to the power of 1 over 2, cut the 2's, is equal to a. Because two a's make a square. And this is represented by the square root of 3 multiplied by the square root of 3 is actually just 3. So the, the square root squared, um, it, it cancels out the power of 1 over 2 and, and simply gives the value inside. Next, something a bit more complex. If a root c is multiplied by b root d, the values outside the thirds, I mean the square roots are multiplied together, a, b, power to square root c, d, the values inside are multiplied together. For example, 2 root 7 multiplied by 3 root 2 is actually equal to 6 root 14. The values outside stay outside, the values inside stay inside. This can also be considered as 2 times root 7, 2 times root 7 multiplied by 3 multiplied by square root of 2. So the 2 and the 3 join together to make 6 multiplied by square root of 7 times the square root of 2 is square root of 14 and 6 times square root of 14 is essentially equal to 6 root 14 okay that demonstrates that law next the square root of a divided by the square root of b is actually equal to the square root of a over square root of b and when there's a square root on top and at the bottom this can be simplified to make the entire thing go inside one single square root. So square root of a over b. It's exactly the same thing. So let's say square root of 3 divided by square root of 5 is actually equal to the square root of 3 over 5. It's the same thing. Next, addition uh, of square roots. Next, working with addition. Square a square root of c plus b square root of c. Now here we cannot apply the same rules as, as in multiplication. We cannot multiply, we cannot add uh, what's inside the square root and add what's outside the square root. So here we have to treat the root c, the square root of c, as an algebraic term. Basically it's like x, it's, it's an irrational version of x, algebraic term. So let's say we have uh, ax plus bx. We can, in, in algebra, represent this as a plus bx. The x stays the same. It, ca it cannot be evaluated. The same thing we have to do for the square root of c. It cannot be evaluated. So we just add together the terms outside the square roots. The square roots are exactly the same. But the terms are different. So this can be represented as a plus b in a bracket square root of c. See, 2 root 5 plus 4 root 5. See, root 5 is considered an um, algebraic term. It's like x or y. It cannot be evaluated. It's just there. So the values outside, the, the coefficients 
of this algebraic term are added together because of the sign in the middle. 2 plus 4 is equal to 6, so 6 root 5. The root 5 stays the same, it is treated as an algebraic term over here. And same goes to um, a subtraction. A root C minus B root C is actually A minus B square root of C. So 3 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 3 is actually equal to 3 minus 2, 1, I mean square root of 3. The, the, the 1 goes without saying. The 1 is invisible there. Next, this is where things get uh, slightly trickier. So the square root of a, b square. Let's separate this into a multiplied by b square. So b square, so we can separate this into two different square roots, essentially. So square root of a, square root of b square. This is applying the first uh, the first rule of uh, thirds. So square root of a, b square can be separated into square root of a multiplied by the square root of b square. Now we know that the square root of b square, because, because of laws, that the square root of b square is actually a b. So the square root can be removed and a b can be put outside the a. For example, let's say we have the square root of 12. The first step here would be to, do, to draw, um, to think of two different values, two or three different values, and one of these va that, 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 uh, that are multiplied together to form 12. And one of these values should be a square number so that we can remove the square root. One can go outside the square root. So 12, uh, there, there are a few possibilities for 12. 12 times 1, obviously. 6 times 2. 4 times 3. The first law over here is the first, first uh, rule to find out which of these three we should use is which one uh, contains a square number this one doesn't so this can't be used 6 times 2 there's no square number here 4 times 3 4 is a square number so we use 4 times 3 separate this into two different square roots square root of 4 square root of 3 the square root of 4 as we know is 2 so 2 and the square root of 3 is an irrational term so it stays the same so the square root of 12 can also be represented as the as 2 square root 3 because one value goes outside the square root one, as soon as it's evaluated. Since it's slightly trickier, um, I'll give you a different example. The square root of 24. 24 times 1, 12 times 2, 6 times 4. Okay, this one cannot because it doesn't have a square number. 12 times 2, no square number. 6 times 4, 4 is a square number. So 6 times 4. Square root of 6 square root of 4, square root of 4 is uh, obviously 2, so 2 square root of 6. So the square root of 24 can also be represented as 2 root 6. If you are completely new to this topic, um, this will require some practice to get the hang of it, but if this is more of a revision video for you, then, then you should already know this. So the next row is the um, the squaring the whole squaring of thirds so the square root of a plus the square root of b whole square so here is this is actually equal to a plus b plus 2ab let me explain why so the square root of a plus b multiplied by the square root of a plus square root of b so we expand basically i'll show you why this equals that a plus square root of a b plus square root of a b plus b so a plus b a plus b stays as a plus b and 1 plus 1 is 2 so 2 square root of a b for the, 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 the negative version of this the square root of a minus square root of b whole square is equal to a plus b minus 2 square root of a b. Same law applied. Then we have the final one. This is basically equivalent to a plus b times a minus b is equal to a square minus b square. You should already know this. this, this the, um, a similar format is applied for thirds. 
the square root of a minus the square root of b multiplied by the square root of a plus the square root of b. Now, one thing you have to remember that these two are conjugates of each other. The terms are the same, but the the, the sign in the middle is is different. So, when you multiply the, the conjugates of, the, of, uh, of a term together, it's essentially equal to a minus b because square root of a times square root of a is a. It removes the square root. Square root of b times the square root of b, it removes the square root, leaving you with a simple answer of a minus b. So, for example, 2 minus square root of 3 multiplied by 2 plus square root of 3. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. So, minus 3 is equal to 1. The answer is 1. Now, this video touched up on the rules we have to follow when it comes to working with thirds.